So, that brings us to Glandstein seals. So inside this system, we got high pressure steam. We've got 2,500 pounds here. We got 700, 650 here. We've got 700, 650 here, 120 here, and 120 here going down to a vacuum over here, right? So as the steam goes through the system, it gives up energy, it loses pressure, it turns the rotor. Well, all these different places have a shaft that sticks out into the space, and then that means if you've got 700 pounds steam, it wants fucking out, right? If you've got a shaft, the shaft's not rub rubbing, you don't have full contact, so you got there's a, there's a crack and the steam wants out. And similarly, when we get over here in the LP, you got vacuum on the side, air wants in, right? We clearly don't want steam spewing out all over the turbine deck because it would be hot and sweaty and miserable. And we don't want steam, we don't want air leaking into the, the condenser, in part because of efficiency, and in part because it would it would drag dust and shit with it, right? You would contaminate the, the condensation <coughs> water, and the more stuff that gets drug across those seals, then the more raggedy the seals get, and the faster it leaks, and the less efficient it gets. So how do we keep it in? Labyrinth seals. Labyrinth seals. That is the first step. Good answer. Let's go back to black. So you've got a shaft. And then you've got a housing. So then on one side, yeah. all right, so let's, let's get straight to seals. So it, you've got little crenulations like at the top of a castle. And then, then the other side kind of has keys that fit into those crenulations. Labyrinth is a fancy word for maze, so a labyrinth seal is just creating a tight little convoluted path for the steam to have to take as it goes through there. So we said we had 700 pounds of steam trying to get out. So then we've got a steam header. Got more labyrinth seals. And we got vacuum header. Okay. So the steam that leaks out. Four pounds of steam that is being pushed in, and you got whatever steam is leaking out, and then you got the gland steam exhaust condenser that is catching all the, the rest of the stuff and catching the steam and suck it off and turn it to water, and then it goes back to the condenser through the miscellaneous drain. If this side is under vacuum, it's minus 14 psi. Then the air here is trying to get in, and you got four pounds of steam being pushed there, and that steam going to go that way, it's going to go that way, and the vacuum is going to catch it so that it doesn't fill up the space, but it's going to provide enough pressure to keep the air out, right? The air's without this four pounds of steam, then the air would be trying to get in, and that's not what we want.
and we've got our land steam exhaust header. And it is maintained at 4 psi. at low loads, or initially, when we're just starting the turbine off, we've got no load at all, right, during startup, where are we get this four pounds from? From the ox steam. And there are three sources of ox steam, and during startup, you're using the primary superheat. And during normal running, you're using the cold reheat, which is there. And ox boiler is the other, other source that we never use here. So, Jack was correct. Primary superheat to a control valve takes us down to four pounds. Well, as you go up and load, the pressure throughout the system goes up, and now the pressure is trying to leak off, especially here between the HP and the IP. You got 2,500 pounds next to 700 pounds. There's a lot of leakage trying to happen there. So that is a good spot for us to tap off and steal that steam to maintain this four pounds. How do we maintain it just four pounds? How do we keep it from going up to 100 pounds? Uh, by uh, sending it to the heaters? Using that to send the heaters? Uh, nope. It goes, we got a control valve that is dumping it back to the condenser. The condenser's under vacuum. So it's at you know negative 14 pounds. So however much this is leaking off, this valve opens up to control that and dump it back to the condenser. And that maintains this four pounds on the header. They took the best on the back of Tula? Yeah. So, so we're sucking on one side and pushing on the other, and this valve opens up enough it holds back enough that you stay at four pounds and sucks off the rest. It's the second time I've said suck off. <laughs> you're not monetized, are you? No, I'm not monetized. And I click a little thing that says my, my videos are for adults. <laughs> Alright. That's really it. Anybody know where these valves physically are? So land steam exhaust condenser, there is a ladder right next to it. It goes up to a little platform and it has these valves and then there's also like an inlet isolation, probably not on that one. There's like an inlet isolation and then there's like a bypass valve. And then these two valves talk to each other. So they kind of have one controller that is maintaining those four pounds. And you should never have both these valves open at once. It starts out on one providing, and then when you hit four pounds, then this will gradually choke back off, and then eventually it will go above four pounds, and then the, the dump side will start opening back up. It wasn't early on, it wasn't a matter of working right there manually. There have been a couple of times that we had things jack up. I want to say on the supply, the supply valve, and that we were using the manual I don't think it's manual. I think it's an MOB still, but I, it's it's not got any kind of auto feature on it. It's like a bump it open five percent at a time kind of valve. That's crazy. That it only takes four pounds to hold that. The labyrinth seals do most of the work. So the ladder, the ladder seals pull the pressure way down, and then the four pounds isn't necessarily holding it back on the HP side, but it's hold, it, the, the vacuum is, can catch the rest of it, you know? 
So let's do color. So then on the outside of every one of these, you're pulling off to the glancing exhaust condenser. That's why you gotta keep it level in the glass thing condenser too, huh? So you don't you don't pull. So you've got condensate flowing through the tubes, you've got steam going to the outside of the shell. We've also got air extractors, which are fans that are blowing it out the roof. Yeah. So then the I have trouble with colors today. I should have picked blue because I was going to draw a water level later. So then you got a water level at the bottom, and then a loop seal. And then this goes to the miscellaneous drain tank. And that has a control valve. It goes to the condenser. So as this steam goes in here, the cold water, cold water is 120 degrees. Cold air water cools the steam, makes it condense. That helps pull the vacuum, and then the water drips down through loop seal, then overflows the miscellaneous drain tank, and then the level of the drain tank goes up, and then when the transmitter sees that it's high enough, then it opens up that and dumps that level back to the condenser, and then it shuts off again, and that thing cycles every 20 minutes or so. It cycles all the time without anybody having to pay any attention to it, except that one time. Then we just close it and let it run over until the top. Yes, then we just close, shut the manual isolation and let, let it overflow on the phone. Good thing I don't watch Brown on the Round today. He knew a little bit more about what you're talking about now. Yeah. He's actually got to see it out there. Making sense to you now? Got to at least take some readings on some skins. And that's land steam seals. That's it.